Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Mark Otte about his track Mushroom Therapy. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Mushroom Therapy, my interview with Mark Otte. Enjoy. Music has always been a part of the life of Dutchman Mark Otte. Coming from a rich musical background, he gets involved in dance music at an early age. At the end of 2003, the first track under Mark's own name came out. Mark Otte and Mushroom Therapy. A beautiful progressive trance track which got released with a remix from none other than Armin van Buren. For this week's vlog I sat down with Mark in the Artone studios in Haarlem to ask him about the story behind Mushroom Therapy. Besides that you will hear more as well about his job as a coach and of course we spoke about how Mark got involved with Martin Garrix and his work at the Stamped studios. My first question to Mark was how old he was when he started to listen to music. I've listened to music my whole life. Um, I remember uh, as a kid, there were always records playing on my dad's stereo. And uh, yeah, he was showing us all kinds of music. So as far as I can remember, music has uh, been a part of my life. Yeah. And do you still remember some of the bands or the acts that you were listening to around that time? Oh, nice. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I still consider them uh, some of my biggest influences. People like uh, Fleetwood Mac, uh, Dire Straits, mm, some Led Zeppelin, but really all, all kinds of music, uh, some, some jazz. My, my parents listen to a lot of country music, so it's undeniably a part of my influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would say Fleetwood Mac and, and Dire Straits, probably the biggest bands for me. Okay, yeah. so uh, are you a self-taught musician or did you study music growing up? Um, I went to music school. Um, I'm originally a drummer, mostly, although um, there were musical instruments uh, all my life uh, uh, at the house. So I was already playing guitar and, and some keys and everything. But for drums, I went to the music school for about eight years. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you like it? <laughs> yes, I loved it, absolutely. And, and I also did like the... Um, the drum drum band thing and even like uh, orchestras and so yeah music has basically always been my life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um, at what time did you start with making your own music okay well uh, there's different stages of making music I would say like maybe I was like eight or ten when I started experimenting with tape machines from my dad to clarify, we had a, a fully dedicated attic for music. Oh, so wow. there were drum kits and, and guitars and everything. I mean, that was my uh, my heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so I, I started trying out things with a with, uh, tape machine. Um, after that, my, bought, uh, my dad bought um, like a, a keyboard where you could record different tracks and I started making music and also did kind of like covers and, mm -hmm. and gave them my own spin it was so much fun and then they bought a PC and I don't know I, I guess that was around when I was like 14 or so um, that was the first time when I was able to do MIDI and to record uh, like notes um, I think around that time is when I started making kind of like um, music with a start and, a, and an end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And was it like more that dance music already then or? Yes. Yeah. I, I tried different things. Uh, I just, I, I have always loved all kinds of music. And as I just explained, there were very different types of music uh, in the house. Uh, but I was there from the very start when house music started to happen. Uh, we had the Turn Up The Bass yeah. compilations. Legendary series. Absolutely, and, and I was a part. I, I, I was into that right from the start. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so that was like the end of the 80s, early 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. 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 So do you recall your very first ever release? I do, I do. Um, I released a remix uh, as a first release. So I was part of a group, I, I kind of had a mentor. Uh, his name is Mark Munyon, amazing guy. He, 
used to tour with Snap and was involved uh, with Technotronic, I think. Uh, and he taught me a lot. And we did a remix from one of his originals. Uh, also with Case Beamont, a guy who was involved in Tune Unlimited for a couple of tracks. So all these people uh, coming together. And Martijn van Oers, another name that we will probably run into later. The four of us did that remix and that was, I think it was called the Marmon remix to Keros, Are You Ready? Yeah. And this was all through Diggy Dance. Oh yeah, yeah. the label Clubhead. from the Clubheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your very first release as like like solo or uh... yeah. So then um, I think the next one was Gomorra, uh, Machento Genial, and this is a track. I mean, we're talking about uh, two like trancey uh, tracks today. Um, that was so different. That was like hard, hard dance, hard house was uh, was the name back then. I yeah. think so. If people would hear that, I think they would be like. What the hell? <laughs> How could this be a Mark Alter track? <laughs> but uh, yeah. And yeah, it was like two, 2001, which is like 20 years ago. I know. Yeah, I yeah. Know. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Time flies. Yeah. So for this interview, we're going to talk about your track Mushroom Therapy. Uh, that one came out back in 2003 and it was the first release under your own name, Mark Alter. First things first, was there anything that did inspire you when you started to work on the track? Yeah. Okay, so I have a, quite a funny story about that. Uh, I was making music with several people uh, uh, in the neighborhood, as I just explained. Um, one of them uh, was Martijn van Oers, and I uh, collaborated with him on a lot of demos. So, but Martijn was uh, quite unhappy with the speed at which I was working. He was like, that should be faster. So we came up with a plan to make a track in one day. And I still use that term a lot uh, nowadays. So we uh, sat down and we made a schedule. Like, okay, the first hour of the morning, we're going to be looking for samples. And then the second hour, we're going to create a baseline. And really, we, we divided the whole day into segments like that. And um, we just started working and blah, 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 blah. Uh, there was a song, uh, like almost finished. I think we spent one and a half days uh, eventually. and that became Mushroom Therapy. Um, but that was the original mix. And that never got released. Because what happened then, um, I thought we did a great thing and I loved the original. But I said to Martijn, I said, okay, great. This experiment worked clearly. We even did um, negotiate a deal with some labels for the original already. But I said, I want to give it my own spin. I want to do my own thing with it. So I'm going to make a remix. And that became the, the Lightscape, Lightscape remix, mix, yeah. which took me probably three months. Oh, you forgot to make your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there were kind of uh, different reasons why it took that long. One of them being um, technology wasn't anywhere near the uh, level of today. And it was simply the case that my computer just wouldn't uh, do the whole track in, in one time. Oh, wow. So I literally, I uh, cut the track in like 10 pieces. I recorded the first piece and then changed some things so that the right instruments were playing, second piece. So at the end I had like 10 little WAV files and I glued them, glued together. them together and that was the... Oh, wow. Yeah. What, what, what software were you using? Funny, um, I was using Logic already then i'm still using logic but logic on pc so before apple bought emagic the company that made logic uh i was i was a very happy uh, logic user yeah. already yeah oh wow yeah so, so was everything like software or did you use some equipment as well no uh for mushroom um so this was before i signed at a publisher and i got like a, a nice deal uh, i think i had literally one uh hardware synth it was a so-called rompler the roland xv3080 uh like there's these pads in mushroom therapy lightscape remix and um they those came from that uh, but for the rest i think it's mostly samples like the drum beats and everything um and probably some early software synths but like early because it's it's just incomparable to what we have today and the guitar that's me yeah, that's yeah. a real guitar. That's a real guitar. It, it was my dad's guitar back then. Uh, he uh, eventually gave it to me and I still have it. Uh, I love it. Um, 
That's funny also, by the way, because um, during that first day of creating the original, we used the XV3080, like Spanish guitar, for the lead. And in the remix, I was like, I'm going to make it into a real guitar. And that rarely happens, of course. If you do a remix, then all of a sudden you're going to record some real instruments. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, mm. oh, cool. Um, so what was the hardest part of the production? Let, let's, let's talk about the Lightscape remix then. Yeah, well, I, I, I kind of already told you that was super hard uh, to, to make my computer do what it needed to do. I had this like vision uh, I, I heard what I wanted to do and I had so many layers uh, that was really hard um, for the rest it's probably down to the mix like getting every uh, every bit of detail in there um, I think that was the hardest yeah so w when you still listen to the, the track do you still know like okay here's like a cut here's a cut and here's a cut uh, actually for uh, in the like drop I guess so, yeah, because yeah. I distinctly remember. So there is this sound, and I don't know if it's, this is too nerdy or anything, but I'll just tell you. Um, there's this sound, the pad, and it moves. It, it has a lot of movement in it. So it goes up and then it goes down. And when I was making these 10 little cuts, um, sometimes the pad would go up and sometimes it would go down. So I, I chose the ones that kind of made a logical transition from the one and to the other. I mean, wow, it's yeah. very complicated. Yeah. So uh, mushroom therapy, is there a story behind the title? Um, there is an, uh, uh, not a real story behind it. And I've uh, always kept it a secret where uh, it came from. And I'm not going to change that now. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. So was it easy to find the label for the track? Uh, was it? Um, Absolutely. Well, I told you we had some interest from labels for the original. They didn't want to do anything with my Lightscape remix. Um, and then there was this uh, great thing that happened to me because I was living in Tilburg. Uh, at Tilburg, there is a famous pop education called the Rock Academy. And I had a friend at the Rock Academy um, and he had a band. This band did a rehearsal and I went there, but the uh, regular guitar player, he wasn't there, so they had a substitute. And the substitute was Eller van Buren, so the brother of Armin. And we got to talk and um, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I, I knew uh, that he was in the neighborhood and I was like, hmm, okay, interesting, Armin van Buren, but I didn't, I, I didn't ask him anything. But we got to talk and he said to me like, hey, if you want to, uh, I can uh, bring your uh, music uh, to, to my brother. So that's what happened. And I believe that three days later, uh, I had an email from Armin who was like super enth enthusiastic about, especially uh, mushroom therapy. Um, so I was in my student room like, <laughs> this was this crazy, crazy cool news. Um, so, and he said, I want to work with you. And then I went into talks with uh, what then became Armada music. Yeah, because there was no Armada music yet. No. If you look at some of the interviews or the radio uh, episodes that Armin uh, did, sometimes he tells a story that mushroom therapy is actually the reason for Armada to get started. Yeah, that's yeah. a pretty nice compliment. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the version on the A side is a Lightscape mix. We already uh, spoke about that one. Uh, the B side of the record contains a remix of Armin. So how did you make that happen? Did he suggest it himself? Like, I want to remix this track? Yep. Oh. I didn't have to ask anything. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think he was very uh, enthusiastic about like the, the theme of it. He, he used the guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was his suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> so yeah, of course, Armin was supporting the track in his radio show, A State of Trance, and in his sets. Uh, do you remember hearing him play it for the first time on the radio or at a gig? Yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is also tying into why my artist name is my own name. So I had the email from Armin. I was in my student house. And I think maybe the day after or a couple of days later, I remembered that he uh, got invited by Pete Tong to do a BBC Radio 1 Essential Mix. 
which is a big thing. It's a huge thing yeah. for a DJ, of yeah. course. And I believe it was his first. I'm not sure. But I was like, hmm, okay, I missed that. Let's see on the internet um, what his track list was. So I opened the track list and I like, <laughs> first track, Mark Otten, Mushroom Therapy. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So that's also the reason why, you ha why you're using your own name for that one. We had a yeah. different ar uh, like artist or act name. Yeah, yeah but uh, can, I- Can you tell that one or is it also a secret? Sure, sure. Uh, I think it was Kink with, uh, funnily enough, there is a kink now, of course, but we uh, uh, wrote it like K-I-N-K-Q-U-E. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the cool way. Yeah, the, like, like the French, French way. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So do you remember some other DJs that were playing the track as well? Yeah, I thought about it. Um, I know uh, like Above and Beyond played it, um, uh, but other than that, I, yeah, there were definitely m more people, but I, my memory yeah. kind of uh, yeah. fails me there. It, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. And actually, I, uh, what I didn't tell you yet, so the, the track got released in 2003, but it was already almost two years old. Oh, so you made it in 2001 already. So it's actually 20 years old. Oh yeah, well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, what did happen after the release? Like, I, I, I'm not sure if music was your full-time job already then? No, absolutely not. No, I was um, uh, studying. Actually, I studied something completely different. I studied uh, business engineering and management science at the T uh, Technical University in Eindhoven. So I was just doing music on the side, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, around the time your tracks Mushroom Therapy, Tranquility and So Serene came out, uh, you weren't DJing yet. Uh, it took more than 10 years before you actually started to DJ, but you stopped with DJing not long after that. Is there a reason why you're not DJing anymore? Yep. So um, I never started DJing for several reasons. First of all, I really believed that it wasn't for me. I got asked by Dave Lewis twice <laughs> and I told him no twice. Um, because I felt it wasn't something that would make me happy. Um, I was underestimating DJing like hugely back then. So that's one of the reasons, but uh, an even more important reason is something I've never shared with anyone yet. Um, it's uh, kind of a big deal. Um, I am um, dealing with Lyme's disease since 26 years now. So even before my first release, I, uh, I was already sick, but I never knew until nine years ago or something, ten, probably 10 years ago, because when I discovered finally what was wrong with me and I had to stop studying and it was hard for me to work on music for a couple of years. Um, when I stopped, um, sorry, w when I uh, discovered what was actually wrong with me, now for the first time in my life i finally had a chance to heal because i could go towards that goal of healing this specific mm -hmm. uh, disease and i i was asked all over the world to to play like indonesia lebanon mexico i don't know all these um questions came in but i always said no and then um with this new clarity of my health um i decided okay I'm, now there is a chance where i can actually uh, start playing because I was just convinced that if I would have said yes to Dave or to these gigs that would be a, a very bad idea for me yeah. back then. I was doing a lot better uh, 10 years ago when I, when I found out so I decided to start playing yeah and then only then I discovered ah yeah I had all kinds of reasons not to do it but I was basically just super scared. So there was the health thing, but it was also just fear. Yeah. But when I started doing it, I mean, I get goosebumps now. I, I just completely loved it. Um, I went to Croatia, I did Luminosity, I played on Ibiza. I played for a couple of years, but the last summer I played, um, I basically got sick after each gig. So at the end, it was just either too early or maybe it's, it's not for me after yeah. all. Yeah. Well, at least you enjoyed the DJ life for a little bit. Oh, absolutely. And I've made friends for life. Yeah, um, also very important. I have zero regrets uh, uh, with the decision yeah. to, to actually start yeah. that. And there is still some hope 
that maybe I can start doing something uh, later on. Yeah. Hey, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> So these days it looks like you're busier than ever. Uh, you're writing for lots of people and you also work for Martin Garrix. Uh, for the people that don't know the story, can you tell how you and Martin got to meet and how you started to work with him? Of course, um, love to tell that story. <laughs> um, so when I graduated from the university, um, I started to work at Armada Music actually, at the office. So I was an artist there and I was an employee. Um, but that was just for 20 hours per week because besides that I wanted to pursue the artist career. But I also got invited to start teaching at that rock academy where I met Eller. Um, and soon after that I also got invited to start a new department at the Hermann Brood Academy in Utrecht. Um, and I decided to do that at a point at some point. Uh, so I was a teacher at the Rock Academy and I was uh, a teacher and like the head of the department at the Herman Brood Academy. And a couple of years in, there was this kid coming in after the year started in September called Martijn Gagetsen because he heard from his good friend uh, Julian, Julian Jordan, that he had such a great time uh, learning about music and production and everything. Uh, while Martin was in his uh, high school doing math and, and everything. So he convinced his parents to uh, at least take the, the, the introduction, the, the conversation. And yeah, so we immediately uh, said, okay, this is, uh, this is great. You can start uh, at this year actually. So um, he became my student. And this was the year that uh, he released Animals. So in the year that I was his teacher, he all of a sudden became world famous. So a couple of years later, uh, he graduated and he became a huge deal, of course, super successful. And at some point he bought Stamped Studios in Amsterdam at Studio Complex. Um, he asked me if I wanted to work there. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and, and I did several things there. Uh, I am doing several things there. I uh, did uh, some engineering work there, and I also created my own um, teaching uh, organization there. It's called uh, Producer Coaching by Mark Otten. Maybe we'll get around to that later. Um, so Martijn started calling me more and more uh, for specific work for his music. Uh, so I ended up um, quitting the engineering job and now I'm uh, working with him directly a lot yeah. yeah so yeah this sounds like a dream job to me <laughs> yeah you know Twan I am so blessed with all these different things that I can do and actually um, we didn't get around to that yet but after uh, leaving Rock Academy and Herman Brood Academy I eventually started teaching at the conservatory of Harlem very close by here um, and actually I quit uh, working there very recently as well because there's so much cool stuff to do yeah. there's so much happening with my time but also with the with the coaching with my own projects so um, I basically am spoiled for choice yeah. uh, I can do all these different things and I have to leave a few things that I absolutely love yeah yeah well, good for you. So, at, so at, at the Rock Academy and the Helmand Boat Academy, did, did you teach some other people that are pretty successful now? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I was already talking about Julian Jordan as well. Um, Firebeats. So, uh, very cool guys. Um, I have been coaching Steve from Lucas and Steve uh, lately. Um, the Sluwe Vos but also uh, Maduk, like a huge name in uh, drum and bass nowadays from Liquicity. Um, yeah, it's, it's so many people. I mean, there's so much talent there. Uh, Swag is a very big name nowadays, working a lot with Jesto, for instance. Um, also guys on Anjuna Deep, like uh, Kole or uh, Buddha Kid or um, what's his name? Northfold. Northfold. Yeah. yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah. 
So uh, yeah, you already said like you're coaching producers. Uh, can you tell a bit more about that? Yes. So during my um, teaching job, I discovered that I really loved to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. So at the conservatory in Harlem, for instance, I mainly um, was guiding uh, graduate students. So when Martijn asked me to come work at Stamp Studios and he said, you can also teach there, I was like, okay, let, let's do one-on-one -on -one things. Uh, and we coined it Producer Coaching by Mark Olton. And yeah, we just started working with whoever uh, wanted this one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of teaching or coaching. The thing is, uh, what I really love to do is not just talk about the technical side, but I like to go into the things that move the person or maybe block the person, you know? So we're talking about, okay, how should we set up a compressor? But we can also talk about, hey, what is inspiring you? Um, and how we, can we improve that further, for instance? So it became um, so enjoyable to do and, and it's been just crazy successful basically yeah. actually and this is a kind of a, a scoop uh, I've just hired my second coach for the program because we have so much people in the waiting list now uh, even uh, after we started doing remote sessions too since corona so I have studio sessions now and I have remote sessions but still there is a lot of a uh, lot of activity there you're a busy guy. I know. So do, do you even have time for your own productions now? Well, this is an issue. I um, um, had an interview last year with a good friend of mine, Jaap, and um, I said, yes, and now I want to focus on my own productions. This seems to be uh, the issue for me um, for maybe more like 10 years already. <laughs> There is so much cool stuff to do and I tend to say yes to a lot of things. I've gotten a lot better at saying no, but there, like I said, there's so much yeah. enjoyable stuff. Uh, I definitely um, feel like I want to do more of my own productions. However, since let's say this summer, um, me noticing that Martijn was involving me more and more, that was a point for me. I mean, we're working on several projects and it's just crazy cool um, it's just next level for me and I, I've never been more uh, okay with not having so much time on my own productions because of this yeah this work yeah I can imagine yeah so I don't I don't think we can expect a new mark Alta anytime soon uh, never say never um, but it if there's a new mark Alton it will probably be a while yes yeah, yeah. so is there still something on your bucket list music wise Ooh. Um, well, th the thing that comes to mind is n not really in the sense that things are moving along so nicely. I just want to want to keep going. Um, I don't have like specific names I want to work with, but um, I, I really just want to keep getting better at what I do. Yeah. Um, keep getting asked for these uh, projects. Um, although thinking back I kind of said like if it's possible maybe still uh, uh, perform more yeah but we'll see but only as a DJ or also like live well I've done a lot of bands actually uh, in my youth um, yeah who knows but it, you see a lot of yeah. things are just <laughs> happening and I yeah. can just kind of you just go with the flow yeah mostly and and um, before, I, like I said, I was trying to like get a get a grip of my own career, and I know I, I, I've disappointed a lot of people by uh, not releasing uh, originals anymore, and I understand it. And um, I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe uh, this is how it, it it's uh, supposed to go. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't mean that I don't have new music. I have a laptop full with new projects and and like deep melodic kind of dance music so uh, never say never absolutely you just don't have time <laughs> Th yeah that's the well i choose of course yeah. to not spend time on that because there's so much other cool stuff to do yeah 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 and the last question pineapple on pizza yes or no <laughs> oh man i have to choose right uh i really don't mind pineapple on pizza i love pizza i love pineapple 
and the combination doesn't bother me at all. Good. Well, Mark, thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you so much, Tom. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Mark Otte and the story behind mushroom therapy. Mark, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did a second interview with Mark and in that one we're talking about Crossroads which came out under the project name Rio Addicts, another classic of Mark. That interview will be online in a couple of weeks from now so keep an eye out for that one. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.